morning guys so it's my birthday the day is finally here and i'm very excited to be spending it in london it's the best thing i could possibly imagine it's been a dream for quite some time actually to try and have my birthday in london and i've never done so before but before we head out the door for today i'm just going to show you the presents that i've gotten so far this is from my mother a lovely lovely christmas ornament i think it is of elizabeth the first so beautifully made very detailed and also a book on the english christmas with a cd and some hymns and then an encyclopedia of british history where you can just look up basically everything which is one of my big interests and then from my grandmother i got this i received some money from her for my birthday as my birthday gift so i spent it on this so it's basically from her it's a book on harry potter it's called harry potter film wizardry from the creative team behind the celebrated movie secrets and it's such an extensive guide to everything relating to the movies and the characters and the spells and it's just so thoroughly made it's a really extensive guide so i'm very pleased with that and i'm excited to read everything from cover to cover <laughs> and from my dad it was the same he also gave me some money to find something on my own while being here from him i got a book on the crown jewels and a key ring, which is from the tower as well. It's got the tower and a beef eater and a raven on there to symbolize the key sites in the Tower of London. And then from my grandmother, I also got the poster from the first Harry Potter movie. And we bought an English flag as well. So, yay! <laughs> Today's program is going on a tour of the BBC Broadcasting House and then we just bought tickets to go and see the new Paddington movie this afternoon. So it's, the day has kind of a theme to it because we're also going to find one of the statues. As you may know, they have erected 50 different Paddington statues all over London. So we're going on the hunt to find one of them. So it's going to be a very, very nice day. Now we made it to Starbucks. We have time just for a quick pit stop before we go to BBC. I've ordered a toffee nut latte. And my mother has a gingerbread latte. And then we bought two chocolate coins as well. <laughs> so it's going to be amazing. I have never tried their Christmas blends until a couple of days ago. And they're amazing. At the Harry Potter studios, I tried the gingerbread latte. It tastes like gingerbread men, the cookies. So I'm excited to try this toffee nut latte. So it's going to be good. But after this, next stop is the BBC for now we made it to BBC. Look, and we're about to go in. I'm so excited for that. I haven't been there before. So it's going to be amazing to get a tour of the whole broadcasting company. To get a glimpse into their world. It's a huge building on both sides here as well. So, yay! I'm excited to go in. Straight away, the camera is there. There's nobody on them. They're sort of robotically controlled from reduction gallery. And they swing around on this track here, which is called a dolly mag. The dolly is the bottom of the camera there. Now, you'll see them using these dolly mags when they're outside filming. You might be featured on the street and put them down. And that's as the camera is completely flat. You don't get a camera shutter. It'll right, look like you're on board ship. Now, on the front of the camera, you'll notice there's an autocue head or teleprompt on there. That's where the uh, person who's in there actually reads and says, that's coming back again. Oh, we've got the other one. I'll put it back on again. We've got the mate here. 
here we go, that's it. Uh, yeah, uh, they're reading there from the, the audio cue because it's text along the, the bottom there, but in front of camera lens like that is a sheet of glass. The text is reflected onto that sheet of glass, so, you know, we can't see it. It looks like I'm talking, like I'm talking to you now. And they're trained to read at a particular speed, and that speed is three words per second. Now, I can see your brain turning over. Why three words per second? Two very good reasons. One, it's a good speed just to take in what they're saying, process it at home. Secondly, more importantly, if a story comes in late, the editor of the day can divide by three and know how long it takes to get that particular story on the air. What I'm going to bring up now is the production gallery. Hopefully. There we go. In here we have the producer and the editor and the vision mixer, and they also control the uh, robotic cameras within there as well. We're looking at a bank of monitor screens. There's pictures and feeds coming in from various parts of the country and indeed from various parts of the world. Now they move along various screens till they make what's called the transmission screen. This is the final screen. This is what we will actually see at home when it is the transmission screen there. There we go, that's Studio B. That's in the sort of sub-basement sub down uh, over there. This is where Newsnight comes from, and also Andrew Marr on Sunday. So you've got your Andrew Marr tomorrow morning. This is the studio it actually comes from. Now, you notice the cameras in there, they're not sort of on a, a track at all. They will be manned by actually people when we get it, uh, when they come in there to do it. But the floor is painted, as you can see there. It's painted smoothly, so again, the camera can move on a, a flat surface there as well. and welcome to BBC News, bringing you the best journalism from around the world. In a moment, we'll have all the day's headlines from home and abroad, but first, it's time to cross to our interactive studio to get the latest from our news correspondence with BBC Talks. Lovely, come into the studio in three, two, one, away we go. <laughs> the uh, current heir to the British throne has taken the tube for the first time to celebrate London Underground's 150th anniversary. Prince Charles and his wife, the Duchess of Cornwall, travelled one stop from five minutes to King's Cross on the Metropolitan Line train. It was the first line to open, offering a service between Paddington and Farringdon on the 9th of January, 1863. Lovely in the studio, It's not every day you see a member of the royal family using public transport. Probably never. <laughs> That's what. However, Prince Charles and Camilla did this morning. Prince of Wales and the Duchess and King's Cross on the Metropolitan Line. And guess what? They got a seat. <laughs> <laughs> Wild weather in the Australian state of Queensland has led to a small town becoming covered in foam whipped up by rough seas. Residents and visitors could be seen playing in the foam and taking pictures of the unusual phenomenon on the Sunshine Coast. A group of people were taken by surprise when a car suddenly came towards them out of the foam. In Australia, they've been suffering. And now we go over to the weather. And to the weather centre in three, two, one, there we go. Hello, I'm John Roberts, and uh, I'm presenting the weather to you today. As you'll see up in the uh, northeast, it's uh, getting chilly <laughs> up in Scotland. Some rain showers there in Fraserburgh. West side in Ireland at 7, a little windy at 12. Over in uh, Wales and Aberystwyth, again windy. Reckon all our next wet, wet, wet in the south west. You're definitely going to need umbrellas, wellies, galoshes, gardens, anything you've got. South east, as usual, it's a lovely afternoon. Here's the two day weather forecast. That's all from us in the studio. Enjoy the rest of your day. Goodbye. Um, Goodbye. Lovely. Shuffle your papers. Have a good day. Shuffle your papers. Wonderful. Yes. Very, very well done, everybody. Um,
sort of Christmas, so next week it will have a, a Christmas feel to it. Does anybody watch the one show? Some of you watch it. Well, it's like a magazine thing. Yeah? Lots and lots of different items. We have uh, sort of famous uh, personalities in there. We had David Attenborough last week in there. We had Ian Gislop on Thursday, I think it was. The, the editor of the satirical magazine Private Eye, of course, on the Bible News for you, is on that as well. Um, we have big, big stars like Julie Andrews, Ian McKellen, even that kind of the frog there. Well. Getting bigger than that. Dolly Parton, of course. We have lots of activities going on out here. We have 14 Elvises, one go out there. Stock car racing out here. Excerpts from musicals, West Side Story. Dirty Rock Scoundrels with Robert Lindsay. Uh, when they had the World Cup with people trying to score goals, we attended this sort of little mini football pitch out here. We had lots and lots of cars and things. We even have pig racing out here. Well, <laughs> would you believe there? But uh, as you can see now, uh, we would have liked to take you inside, but we're busy painting the floor there, so we're not, we're not allowed to do that. But... Particularly during the Second World War, actually, there was lots of all the music playing from in here. So much so that some people did write in and complain and say <coughs> they would rather hear the bombs than hear the organ. Um, and there's quite a nice story actually. The, the organ bit, uh, the keyboard's now in storage, but that's the original grill for it on the back wall. And um, the way the building was at the time, the organ music kind of leaked into other studios, so you could only play at certain times of day and things. But if anybody knows anything about an organ, apparently you have to play it regularly to keep the bellows from cracking. So um, what we would have to do, because it wasn't played all the time, um, there was a member of the BBC, he was a member of the Organ Society, and he used to come in in the middle of the night and play the organ to keep it all in check. So it was kind of like the phantom of the BBC, um, as it were. Let us be quiet in the studio, please. So we're recording in three, two, one, here we go. And now it's time for Radio 4 Afternoon Play, direct from BBC Broadcasting House. I hope you're ready, as you're invited for a particularly scary dinner party. <laughs> How long till we get there? Can't you go any faster, Francis? Oh, how lovely to get out of town for a change. Oh no, I don't believe it. We've broken down. I told you to check the car before we left, Francis. Try it again. It might just be that the engine's a bit cold. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, <blast>. <laughs> <laughs> No, it's no good. There's nothing happening at all. I think the battery must have died. Well, it's certainly great timing here in the middle of nowhere. It's just like one of those bad radio plays. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Bye bye. Bye bye. Do you win the